Shalom to the elect of Israel, to the hopeful elect of Israel, you Hebrew Israelites, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. Gotta give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Rekah, Quraysh. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, who teach well, in a sincere salutation to all the arc pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four ends of the earth, the entire world working up the hope for the elect. And Shalom to the Akwaf who are listening and learning, the few sisters who are listening and learning. And my Zaya from the GMS Orlando Camp coming at you another lesson in true fact, faith, and edification, another daily edification. Lord's willing, this be edifying. And I'm titling this Wars, Rumors of Wars is Part of Prophecy. Rumors of Wars is Part of Prophecy. Lord's Witness be edified. Uh, non Jewish war in Iraq started to look like the makings of a soon to be new war. Hold on, let me get that right. It's a lock here. Tonight, the uh, non-war in Iraq started to look like the makings of a soon-to-be new war in Iraq. Several rockets hit near an American oil field in Iran last week. It was followed by a volley from the United States against Iranian assets. Iraq, which is caught in the middle of all this, says it wants the United States troops out. RT correspondent John Huddy picks up this story. While the fight against the coronavirus worldwide continues, another fight also continues to brew in the Middle East between the United States and Iran, with Iraq remaining the most likely battlefield. Last week, five rockets were fired at an American oil company working near Basra. U.S. workers had already left the area. It's unclear who was behind the attack. But on April 1st, President Trump warned that his administration received intelligence that Iran, or one of its proxies, was planning a strike on U.S. forces in Iraq tweeting that if U.S. troops are attacked, quote, Iran will pay a very heavy price indeed. Now, the U.S. And it wasn't no coincidence that they said Basra. U.S. has offered $10 million for information on Hezbollah commander Sheikh Mohammed al-Kafarani, who was a close associate, friend, and battlefield colleague of Iranian General Qasem Soleimani. The U.S. designated Kafarani a global terrorist in 2013. The State Department says it's offering money for info on his activities, his networks, his associates, all part of an effort to disrupt the, quote, financial mechanisms of Hezbollah. And while the coronavirus pandemic may have tempered any immediate attacks on U.S. forces, the U.S. isn't taking any chances and has moved Patriot missile batteries into Iraq, including at Al-Assad Air Base outside of Baghdad, where Iran launched a ballistic missile attack on U.S. troops back in January. Former Pentagon official Michael Malouf said, the move is aimed at protecting U.S. forces and assets there. The United States appears to be consolidating its forces there uh, to certain bases with the idea that um, it ultimately will move out within the next, what we're hearing now, possibly two years. Whether or not Iraq's new prime minister designate Mustafa al qadimi the country's former intelligence head, can bridge the ongoing hostilities in the region remains unclear. He is Iraq's third prime minister designate in 10 weeks, but he also appears, at least for now, to have support from both Tehran and Washington, D.C. Then the question will be whether he will be able to form a cabinet, and that cabinet uh, is, is going to be either the make or break uh, of uh, the, the new prime minister designate. Who is the third person now who has been asked to form a government, uh, and uh, the first two failed? al Kadimi has reportedly agreed not to interfere in the affairs of the country's various militias, and that could include Iran's proxy Hezbollah in the region. But if his country continues to be a battlefront between the U.S. and Iran, he may not have a choice. For the news with Rick Sanchez. See, and the problem is, <clears throat> the problem is, the Lord made it set up this way, man. He got it set up like this, man. With the wicked not being, um, they can't cleave with the heathen, with, with, the, with the, the children of men, the sons of men. So you got, you got the sons of the Most High, which is Yahshua Allah, right? The Hebrews, the lights. 
the sons of the, 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 the princes of power, the princes of the most high. You got the sons of power, you got the sons of men, and you got the sons of the wicked. And the Lord got to set up where the wicked will not cleave with the other nations, man. They're just going to mingle for a period of time. This is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 4 to 3. Let's read the point. As a matter of fact, let's go ahead and read this. This is Daniel chapter 2 and verse 38. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven, have he given it to thy hand and have made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. This is what Daniel was telling Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 39. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. What you're talking about who? The Medo and Persian Empire. And another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth. Which is who? Alexander the Great. Okay. And, um, the Greek Empire. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, far as much, it say far as much as you, as you break it, far as much as iron breaketh in pieces and, and subdue all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of strength of the iron, for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with miry clay. What they call what North America was known for? The US steel, right? Verse 43. Um, and whereas thou sowest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, the heathen nations, right? This is talking about the Edomites. And other 16 heathen nations, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with miry clay. So it's going to always be small wars and rumors of wars with the Edomites and the heathen nations, man. Why? Because they would not cleave. They would just mingle together for a period of time. That's the, that's what the, the, that was the whole deal with the Brexit, man. Separate, man. Okay, they will mingle with the heathen nations, the other heathen nations, but they will not cleave together, man. Let's get this. The world according to Jesse, Jesse, Jesse. Today, we discuss why the U.S. and Iran are reaching <coughs> towards a military confrontation in Iraq. We also reveal what Europe is doing to go around U.S. sanctions to help Iran fight the coronavirus outbreak. Sit See? tight. The show starts See? now. They would never cleave. They would never cleave. They would I'm just mingle, Mr. man. Ventura. Stay vigilant and watch your world. Welcome to my world. Come along for the ride. The world according to Jesse. Yes, yes. Hi, I'm Brigitte Santos. For our top story today, we turn to Iraq, where tensions have reached new highs between the United States and Iran. Earlier this year, Washington and Tehran came dangerously close to a war in Iraq after Washington assassinated Iran's top general, Qasem Soleimani, claiming he'd been plotting attacks on Americans in the region. While all three countries currently face the coronavirus pandemic, the conflict has not slowed down with the rest of the world. A series of new attacks have taken place in recent weeks, and President Donald Trump is now accusing Iran of planning a sneak attack on U.S. bases in Iraq, citing unspecified intelligence. During a press conference, the president said he had very good information that the group planning the attack was Qatayb Hezbollah, stating, quote, it was led by Iran, not necessarily Iran, but by groups supported by Iran, but that to me is Iran. Iranian Foreign Minister Javad Zarif responded in a tweet, quote, Don't be misled by usual warmongers again. Unlike the U.S., which surreptitiously lies, cheats, and assassinates, Iran only acts in self-defense 
It starts no wars, but teaches lessons to those who do. They haven't changed, man. Okay? By rape, rob, murder, and pillaging, that's how they devour the earth, man. Okay? They is the, the cunning, crafty beast of the field, man, that devours. Hey, as it tell you in Habakkuk, man, chapter 2, man, they cannot be satisfied, man. Okay? And they trying to get that oil, man. Because Iran, hey, the best oil is over in Iran, man. And that's what they're trying to get their hands on. So, it's going to continue to be rumors of wars and wars because it's a part of prophecy, man. And while Jake is warned about this coronavirus, you got World War III is it, it, brewing up. The RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is playing out right before your eyes, man. But Jake is caught up in the coronavirus. Jesse, what do you think about all this going on in the middle of a global pandemic? Shouldn't we have some international solidarity, put our differences <laughs> aside just for this moment? Brigitte, I think it's disgraceful. I think when you look at something like this pandemic that affects the entire world, it affects poor people, it even affects people in power. Take a look at Boris Johnson. He's lying in the hospital right now. He might die. It affects everyone. Isn't it time to set down the politics, set down the bull, and you know what comes after that. Set it down, leave it go, and face a problem that affects the entire world and should bring us all together instead of separating us farther apart while these idiots continue to fuel their war games. And what angers me about the Iran deal is our mainstream media, they only go back to when Iran took hostages in the early 70s. So they make people believe that Iran was the initial aggression, aggressor. Not true. Let's go back to the 50s, where Iran had a democratically elected president who was going to nationalize their oil. Well, you don't dare do that. You don't dare nationalize oil or you'll face the wrath of the United States of America. That's exactly what happened. They, they did a coup d'etat. They threw out the elected president and they gave him the shaw. That's what they do, man, because they control the sword, man. Their blessing was to live by the sword, man. That's what they do. They take what they want, man. <laughs> this is... Job 9 and 24, man, the earth was given to the hand of the wicked. And he can do, they can do whatever they want, man. Because the Lord put these devils in rulership, man. He set up over it the bases of men. They put up with the Shah for 20 years when they got rid of him. Taking our embassy was like telling us we want to get rid of you too. And who could blame them after, the, after what we did to them? And now, exactly. come forward in this time of war. And not what just that they did to them, what you did to the entire world, man. The entire planet, man. It tell you in uh, Jeremiah 51 and 25, which I love to read, that links with Revelation 11 and 18, man. It's them that's destroying the earth, man. The Lord said he will destroy them who's destroying the earth. And we know who's destroying the earth, man. It doesn't take a rocket science to figure this out, man. epidemic and they can't set politics aside and well you know what Brigida, what would be better for us when we get out of the epidemic a good war hmm. <laughs> unfortunately the coronavirus outbreak hasn't stopped the u.s from continuing its maximum pressure campaign on iran so a group of former diplomats and foreign leaders are calling on washington to ease medical and humanitarian sanctions on tehran so it can fight the COVID-19 outbreak. The State Department claims medical trade is not blocked by U.S. sanctions, but former leaders have reportedly identified barriers that make medical trade nearly impossible. In all, U.S. sanctions have crushed Iran's economy and made it hard for the country to respond to the outbreak and other crises. The U.S. claims that it cares about human rights, so again, shouldn't it be taking action to potentially save hundreds of thousands of civilians' lives? Jesse. They don't care about nobody, man. Psalms 55 in verse uh, 20. He hath put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. 
he have broken his covenant. Again, Psalms 55 and verse 20. He, the wicked, have put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. What is this talking about? Gad and Reuben, man. The North American Indians. The so-called North American Indians, man. They put forth their hand to be at peace with them. Okay? He had put forth his hand against such as be at peace with him. It said he had put forth his hands against such as be at peace with him. When you look at the tribes of Gad and Reuben, man, they welcomed these conquistadors and Spaniards with peace, man, with open arms. He had put forth his hands Against such as be at peace with him, he have broken his covenant. They made a covenant with uh, the Indian tribes, man, and they break the covenant, man, just like they do with all others, man. Verse 21 The words of his mouth were smoother than butter, but war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawing swords, man. This is what the wicked do. And then you finna hear Jesse Ventura tell you straight up. They can't put the sword down, man. Let's listen on. Well, you got to remember, Brigida, this is called collateral damage. We have a big picture, and if innocent people happen to die during the carrying out of the big picture, that's just collateral damage. And I keep saying that, man. I say that constantly, constantly. We all say it. Stop the possibility. We all say it, man. Casualties of war, man, like I always go into with Yahweh Bashim I was shy. They're going to plague the earth. Why is he plaguing the earth? Because of the Israelites, man. The Lord said he made the world for our sakes. So guess what? Wherever Jake is scattered at, the Lord is going to kill two-thirds of Jake, man. With tornadoes, hurricanes, storms, floods, fires, pandemics, uh, uh, pestilences, famine. He's going to destroy two-thirds of Israel. Why? Because it's the judgment from the Lord. It's from on high, man. And it's always going to be casualties of war, man. It will always be casualties of war. Okay? If some got to die, man, hey, the Lord is going to kill some billions just to save some millions, man. That's how the Lord works. Many are called, but few are chosen. Hold on. Let's run this right back. Listen to what he said. We have a big picture, and if innocent people happen to die during the carrying out of the big picture, that's just collateral damage. They are, hey, when you hobble by Shemnabu Shah, kill two thirds of Israel, they just collateral damage, man. Because this is about the elect's sake. That's why the brothers go so hard fighting for the crown, man. Okay? This patient race, man. Because you can become um, collateral damage, a casualty of your how about Shema Bashar, man, which you don't want to become. Damage. And in this particular case, notice that whenever we go to war, the people that take us to war, they're in no danger. They're no, not in any danger whatsoever. But this. And who are you talking about? The elites, man. They, they, they ain't in danger, man. They living good. Hey, but like, like we know. They fund both sides of the war, man. But this pandemic puts them in danger. So which is more dangerous? I'd say the pandemic is to the war. But they want to get in the war as soon as the pandemic's gone, apparently. And they want to do it with Iran. Now, and do it in Iraq? Let's go back in time. I lost a job because I opposed the invasion of Iraq. Can anyone sit here today and tell us the invasion of Iraq has turned good and turned out to be what we thought it would be? Absolutely not. It is a disaster that has ruined the world since it took place, and now we're going to jump in and continue with it? How about this pandemic should be leading the world to peace? Not to war. Yeah, and even leaders in France, Germany, and the UK, American allies, they've already started going around U.S. sanctions by sending medicine and food to Iran. Well, when you go to Matthew <clears throat> chapter 10 and verse 34, it reads, because see, this is, this is the chessboard of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. So it had nothing to do with nobody else, man. 
Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I'm coming to send peace on the earth. I came not to send peace but a sword, man. The Lord I'm, the Lord got this set up for destruction, man. When you read <clears throat> Exodus 15 and 3, it tells that the Lord is a man of war. The Lord Yahweh is his name, man. He's a man of war. So that would make what? His, what, what would that make his son? <laughs> a son of war, man. This is the words of Yahweh shot right here. Matthew 10 and 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace, but a sword, man. Let's get this one in Luke. This is Luke chapter 12 and 51. It reads, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. I tell you, nay, but rather division. You see, verse 52 say, for from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and two against three. And when you go to Mark 3, what does it say, man? This is Mark chapter 3 and verse 25. It reads, And if a house, Selachia, Mark 3 and 23, And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but have an end. So Satan is coming up, coming up against himself, man. As I tell you also in, 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 in Sirach, man, in the Apocrypha, man. Okay? They are fighting against themselves, man. But that's why I say in Daniel 2 that they will mingle with the seeds of men, but they will not cleave one to another, man. Why? Because the Lord put the spirit on these devils to be the wicked out of all the other 16 heathen nations, man. Through the European Union's Instex barter trade system, now, Instex was, was specifically designed to circumvent U.S. sanctions. Now, even American allies seem to know that this is not the time to be playing politics and picking sides other than the sides of humanity. They are divided. And I agree wholeheartedly with that. This is a time when enemies need to set down the swords, set down the rhetoric, and work together. This That's what crazy. true leaders do. But let's remember something. We have a leader who, when it comes time to going to war, he leads from the rear, not the front. When it was his chance to show patriotism during the Vietnam War and go to war for the country, what did he do? He ran and hid the other way. So he's in not any trouble. It's no problem for Donald Trump to take us to war because he's safe now. He isn't on the firing line. Well, hmm. I just wish he would have joined us and got on the firing line. He might think differently today. Yeah, the former diplomats are also urging President Trump not to use America's voting rights at the board of the International Monetary Fund to block Iran's request for a $5 billion loan from the IMF, which the United States is expected to block. Now, the fact that a single president can disrupt something that's so important says a lot about our international institutions and who they're beholden to. It says a lot about everything here. We seem to be moving towards a dictatorship in this country. We got a Supreme Court now that lets them. That's going to be called a police state, man. Which they already doing. Here go right here. Ecclesiastes 21 and 27. When the ungodly curse of Satan, he curse of his own soul. That's why when I read Mark chapter 3, that Satan is divided against Satan, man. How can he stand fighting against himself, man? Ecclesiastes 21 and 27. When the ungodly curse of Satan... He cursed of his own soul, man. Okay, because these are the wicked of the earth, man. The president basically do anything he wants. We got a Congress that runs to the wind, won't stand up, have never declared war since World War II. And now we've got a, a, a situation where the president can solely make the choice internationally whether something does or doesn't happen. Far, far too much power put in one person's hands. Let's turn to another area in the greater Middle East, Afghanistan, where the Taliban has walked away from peace talks with the Afghan government that were facilitated by the United States. The talks unraveled over a prisoner swap agreement that the U.S. had made with the Taliban. 
Under the terms, the Afghan government was supposed to release Taliban prisoners in exchange for pro-government forces jailed by the Taliban. The problem is, the Afghan government was not included in those initial talks. Now, over more discussions, though, Afghan President Ashraf Ghani had agreed to release 5,000 Taliban prisoners in different phases. But when push came to shove, Ghani said he would not yet release 15 senior Taliban commanders implicated in large-scale attacks. The breakdown comes two weeks after U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo told rivaling Afghan leaders to make a deal with the Taliban or face a potential withdrawal of U.S. troops from the country. The U.S. has also cut $1 billion in financial aid to Afghanistan. Mm. The Trump administration, of course, wants this deal to happen because it would be a major achievement for it, especially in an election year. But the strategy isn't working. The Taliban and Afghanistan government are still at war. Make your prediction, Jesse. Do you think this conflict's going to end soon because of this pressure from the U.S.? No, I don't believe it will. I think they'll try to make it appear it has. But I don't think it truly will. It's obviously that the Taliban and the Afghan government are way far apart. This is a war that's gone on now for well over 20 years. And then if you count the days that Russia was involved in it back in the 80s, this is a place that's perennial, perennially always, it seems, at war. And for good reason. They got strong minerals there. A lot of stuff can be stolen out of that country by the war profits. That's what, so, right. Uh, you know, no, I don't anticipate this war. He before. said by the war profiters. And that's what it's about, man. The minerals, man. And these devils, they fund both sides of the war, man. And I anticipate it. We are a war country now. We need a war. And when we come out of this pandemic, that one will still be going on. And it looks like we may have a new one in some order with Iran in some way. We got to change the direction of our country. Yeah, it's been over 18 years and more people died last year in the Afghanistan war than in any other conflict. And now the coronavirus has struck there too. The country is among many facing shortages in testing, ventilators, hand sanitizers, and other critical medical supplies. The outbreak will be catastrophic there and the war will be partially to blame. Well, again, this is an example of leadership and world leadership. Why can't these guys set down their swords and their political differences when you get an opponent that attacks everybody? See? They can't put down the sword, man. When you got an opponent that attacks everybody, man. Because these devils fund both sides of every war, man. There is nobody immune from this. Right. The Russians will get attacked. Brits will get attacked. The United States will get attacked. Afghan will get attacked. And you see, he talking in cold, man. Because he ain't just going to come up and say, it's the elites, man. <laughs> he ain't going to say, hey, he wouldn't, have, he wouldn't make no money, man. You see? Everybody got a cap on what they can say, man. Iran will get it. Everybody will get it. Isn't it about time to have leadership that would bring the world together to fight things like this instead of fighting ourselves? which accomplishes nothing. That would be absolutely amazing. Well, that's what the Lord has set up, man. He always had it set up like that, okay? Since these devils have been in rulership, what's been going on, man? They've been fighting against each other, man. The French and the British and these, um, you had the French and the British and England Right, you had North America fight. They always been fighting against each other, man. That's what's been going on. They've been fighting amongst themselves, man. Like Mark chapter 3 say. They meant the French and the British, England, and the Edomites in North America are all Edomites, man. It don't make no difference, man. Okay, with, the, with these, uh, what was it, the Civil War? All these wars they had going on right here in Babylon the Great. Over what, man? Power, man. You see? If Satan against himself, man, they cannot stand. And they've been doing this, man, since they came in the rulership of controlling the earth. Right now, man, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given to the hand of the wicked. Now, in other news, Washington state has become the first in the nation to pass a facial recognition bill outlining how local government agencies can use the technology. This is a new thing, man. Face recognition. 
China been doing that, man, for like a year or two, maybe three. Sweden, man. Face recognition is going to be everywhere, man. When you're watching these movies like Minority Report and there's a lot of other movies, man, you can watch. It's all about face recognition, man. Because the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, is about to be mandatory. And you bug outs warned about coronavirus stimulus money, man. The new legislation limits agencies from exercising the unconstrained use of facial recognition services because the technology, quote, poses broad social ramifications. Under the bill, state and local government agencies may only use facial recognition services to locate or identify missing people, the deceased, or possible crime victims to keep the public safe. The new yeah, law right. requires government agencies to now file a notice of intent with a legislative authority and produce an accountability report if they plan to develop or use facial recognition software. Local government agencies will also be barred from using the technology based on a person's religious, political, or social views and activities. But it doesn't limit the sale of facial recognition technology to law enforcement or hold companies accountable or responsible for the outcome of their algorithms. It was also sponsored by Washington State Senator Joe Nguyen, who is currently employed as a program manager at Microsoft, which develops this kind of technology. Now, Jesse, some accountability is better than none, but cities like San Francisco have outright banned police and other agencies from using facial recognition software. Do you think this bill goes far enough in protecting the public's uh, right to privacy? Well, let's remember something, Brigida. Whenever they tell you they have to do something to make you safe, that means they're going to take away some of your freedom. Rest assured of that. Now, on the surface, this looks wonderful. But will it be wonderful if they decide to abuse it? No. It'll be a horror show. Look at the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act was supposed to only be because of 9-11 and an emergency. It's 20 years later, and it's being renewed every year. And that's the biggest thing that's taken our freedoms from us. We have to be careful. Anytime they come in with some type of technology like this, Trust me, Brigida, it will get abused at some point, and it will be misused at some point by the very people we're supposed to trust not to do that. Well, we know that ain't going to happen. I just seen these two articles, and I want to go into them a little bit. I want to go back to this to show you, man, hey, these devils is ready to go, man. The Lord got the spirit on these devils. For war, bringing out the RFID microchip, and to bring Jacob's trouble, man. Uh, Non-war in Iraq started to look like the makings of a soon-to-be new war in Iraq. Several rockets hit near an American oil field in Iran last week. It was followed by a volley from the United States against Iranian assets. Iraq, which has caught the middle of all this, says it wants the United States troops out. RT correspondent John Huddy picks up this story. While the fight against the coronavirus worldwide continues, another fight also continues to brew in the Middle East between the United States and Iran. And guess what, man? World War Three is brewing, man. So while Jake is caught up with coronavirus, World War Three is around the corner, man. They finna make North America, Babylon the Great, a police state, man. If you watch the movie Captive State, you'll understand what's about to go down, man. But Jake is too busy with social media and one about this stimulus money, man. Okay? It just I seen something yesterday, or actually last night. You got Jake fighting over the stimulus checks now, man. Because you got a lot of people that sell their kids, that use their kids, right, to get money. Now they fighting over the stimulus money. Who's supposed to get the money, man? <laughs> Jake is losing it, man. Because you don't let somebody claim your child on income tax. So now they fighting against the person about who's supposed to get the money, man. Jake is bugged out. And Esau know what's going on, man. Esau know how you Jake's get down, man. Just going to bring what? Insurrection. A, a, a violent uprising everywhere, man. This stimulus money. Hey, so Lord, when the other fine, gotta give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Shimon Shah. 
by Hashem and Kakodash, that were honored to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, who well, who teach well. And a sincere salutation to all the Arkham, pushing this truth and pushing this truth and believing this truth throughout the four winds of the earth, the entire world, waking up the whole for the And shalom to the Awa who are listening and learning, a few sisters who are listening and learning. Lord, wouldn't edifying. Till next time I say, shalom.